Hey there. I recently took a trip down to Atlanta for a filming gig. Had to bring a whole bunch of stuff with me, my red Komodo kit, lights, tripod, softbox, all that kind of stuff. And while I was preparing for this trip, I was thinking to myself, I would really like to have a small camera kit to bring with me to just do some filming while I was traveling, behind the scenes, anything that sort of came up. And so what I did was I put together what I think is probably one of the smallest full frame camera packages from Sony. And that's what I brought with me. Now I know a lot of times we're gravitating towards the biggest, fanciest, coolest camera rigged out, all that kind of stuff so we can get really good images out of our cameras. And sometimes that's necessary for the kinds of jobs that we're doing. But it's also really fun to have a stripped down kit that you can throw in a small bag. It is a little bit more fun and often makes you want to shoot a little bit more. So I was going down to Atlanta to work on Axanar, which is a Star Trek fan film. Now, I worked on this a few months ago and spent a few days down in Atlanta filming. I talked about this in an A7R5 video and a podcast I did with Brandon. I'll leave those linked down below. This is my buddy Jeff Fagan, the DP. And this is Barry, one of the sound guys. It was actually Barry's birthday while we were there, so big shout out to Barry. It was really cool to be able to work with a lot of these people, some people I'd worked with before, and it's always fun for me to do some narrative work once in a while, work with a big set, and get to shoot on my red Komodo, which is always a ton of fun. We were able to wrap all the shooting for this project, and it should be coming out hopefully later this year. I'll keep you guys all posted, but in this video, I want to talk about the small full-frame camera package that I brought with me. So I'm back home in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm out at a new lake I've never been to before. I love exploring all the lakes around here. They're really pretty and really nice places to go and shoot and walk around and check out all the trails and the wildlife and all that kind of stuff. So what I wanna talk about in this video is this really cool compact kit if you're in the Sony ecosystem. It's something you should definitely consider. So the A7C2, and I'm using two lenses, the Sony 24 mm f 2.8G lens, and the 50 millimeter f 2.5 G lens. They also make a 40, but I think the pairing of 24 and 50 works really well. Now, personally, if I'm putting together a kit of prime lenses, I really like having a 28 and a 50. That works really well for me, but 24 and 50 also works really well. So all the footage that you saw at the intro of this video was all shot on the 24 mil lens. Now I had every intention of vlogging more, documenting my trip and getting to shoot and record stuff in different locations I don't usually get to, but it just doesn't happen sometimes. <laughs> Long days on set, all the driving, hanging out with friends and family, the vlogging and shooting and stuff kind of took the back burner. So what I wanted to do was come out today and shoot with the 50 mil lens, which is what I'm shooting on right now because I didn't get to use it on the trip. Also get some more footage to share with you and in the process of shooting, share my experience and thoughts about this gear because I think this is a pretty cool little kit. And of course, shooting on full frame is really nice, but what a beautiful day here in late February. I can't wait to come back here and explore more, but for today, I'm gonna walk around a little bit, try to get some images and share with you. How's it going, man? Good, how about you? Good. Any 
photos today? What's that? Every, any I'm photos today? I'm just walking around having You're fun. Just around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have full gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got a lot going on too. Yeah. Are you doing vlogging? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I'm just testing out some gear, so. Oh, cool. That's new. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really cool full frame, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look how small this is. Yeah. Can I hold it? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, actually, it's pretty light. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> this fruit fruit? Yeah. What? That's why I'm testing this out because it's so small. I mean, that's insane. I that's know, 50. man. This is a 50. Yeah, they make yeah. a 24 and a 40 as well. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. This is a um, autofocus. Yep. Lens. Yep. That's nice. Yeah, that's man. Nice. And the ND filter? Yeah, I'm doing video. Oh, you're doing video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The sun is like too bright today. Absolutely, man. Yeah. All right, man. Well, good. Nice to meet yeah, you. You too. If you're enjoying the music in this video, I just want to let you know that it all came from Audio, which is a sponsor of today's video. If you haven't heard of Audio before, it's a music licensing platform. Now, Audio reached out to me a while ago, and like usual on this channel, I have to actually use and like a product before I'd recommend it to you. So I've been using their music in several of my videos, and I've definitely been enjoying it. When Audio and I first started talking, they didn't have the similar song feature, which I was used to on other platforms, but they heard the request from me and from other people, and they added that in. In addition to that, they added this new Link Match AI feature where you can add a link from Spotify, TikTok, YouTube, etc., and it will find similar songs. In general, it's very easy to navigate their catalog and find music that you'll enjoy. So for example, I liked using Chill and No Vocals, and that's the search that I've been using to find a lot of the music I've been using lately. They also have a catalog of sound effects that you can use. They have several plans, including the Pro Plan, which allows you to use the music for personal and client projects, as well as have access to the new Link Match AI feature. And at the time of recording this, it's only $99 per year. So if you're interested, please click on the link in the description. And thank you to Audio for sponsoring this video. So this is the gear that I've been talking about throughout this video. We have the Sony a7C Mark II. This is the silver edition one. We also have the two lenses, the 24 f 2.8 G lens and the 50 mil f 2.5 G lens, all from Sony. So I do think this is one of the coolest, small, portable, full frame kits you can get out there. Just take a look at this little kit. You can easily throw this inside of a backpack in a sling bag, or maybe you can find some space inside of your case. So like I was saying earlier on the video, you know, I shoot with a lot of different rigs and cameras for different kinds of situations. And, you know, when you are bringing a cinema camera and a bunch of stuff and you want something really small that you could use for videography or for photography or vlogging, this is a cool little setup. So I haven't done a review on the a7C Mark II and this is not gonna be a very technical video. Now I have done a lot of videos on the a7 IV over the last few years on this channel. I love that camera. And essentially the a7C II is an a7 IV inside of a smaller body. There's a couple differences here that I do wanna point out. First of all, it is a smaller body. It has a smaller EVF that's off to the side. It still does have the flippy screen for filming yourself and filming at different angles. It does have three exposure controls, which I love, which you did not have on the a7C Mark I. So we have one on the front here. We have one on the back and we also have the wheel. So that's really nice. We do have a few things that we have to give up. We have a uh, micro HDMI port and we also only have one card slot, but we still do have a full size battery. But essentially it's an A7 IV inside with a few other features. We get the AI autofocus and a couple other things, but in terms of image quality, dynamic range, low light, you're getting the same image out of these two cameras. So now let me talk a little bit about the lenses. 
So like I said, I have the 24 and the 50 here, but the 40 is very similar. Now the design of these two lenses is very similar. So I'm actually gonna give you a tour on the 50 because I have the 24 mounted on here, but you can see that they look very similar. So the 50 is kind of interesting because it comes with this lens hood and this lens hood does not come with the 24. And this has an interesting design because the lens hood actually gets smaller as it goes away from the lens. And the lens cap will actually fit on the hood or the lens itself. So let me show you that. So if we take off the cap here and you see the hood, when you pop that off, you can see the design of it. And then the cap will actually fit directly on the lens itself as well. So that's kind of a clever design. It has a 49 millimeter filter thread, which is pretty common for a lot of small lenses. I was just using a step up ring uh, for using my ND filter. On the back, we have a nice metal lens mount. I'll give you a little bit more of a tour on the lens. First of all, we have an aperture control. Now, I personally don't love aperture controls on lenses like this because I often bump them and then all of a sudden I'm randomly at like F16 on my camera and I can't figure out why. And then I remember, oh, I just bumped this away from the A. So when you have this set on A, this will allow the camera to control the aperture. I wish there was like a lock to lock this in or I wish they kind of didn't put this on here, but some people like it. It is clicked, but you can also de-click it with the switch over here so you can turn the, the click off and then you can use it for racking aperture if you're shooting video. So either way, I just leave it on A and don't really think much about it because I control the aperture from my camera. In addition to that, we do have a uh, assignable button here, which is really nice to have even on a small lens. I really like having one extra button, especially on the a7C2. There aren't a ton of customizable buttons, so it's nice to have that. And this I love to see is the autofocus, manual focus switch. You don't always see that on little lenses. Now, one thing I have to talk about here is the focus ring here, which I know a lot of people are gonna be using autofocus with this lens. It is a pretty standard uh, manual focus ring for a focus by wire. It's got a nice feel to it. It's not too stiff, it's not too loose. But one thing for me personally is I do use manual focus a lot and it's just a very narrow focus ring and I was often grabbing the aperture ring by accident when I was trying to focus. So if manual focus is something that you do often, that's a little bit challenging with this, but overall plastic build quality, which keeps the weight and the price down, but overall really nice lenses, really fun to use. And of course the size, you just can't beat it. So overall, I really enjoyed using this kit. And I think if you're looking for a very small and portable yet powerful full frame package, Go check out this gear, it's pretty cool. I would also like to try out the 40, but I haven't gotten to check that out yet. So big thank you to b &H Photo who lent me this gear to test and review. I buy most of my stuff from there, and if you're looking to pick up any camera gear, please go check out b &H Photo. They've been a huge support of this channel. Also, big thanks to Audio for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.